Hi, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Uh, please hit the like button if you do actually like these videos. It does really help us try to get up the YouTube rankings and it will enable us to reach more people. And hit the bell button to uh, get notifications on future um, videos. So, um, I thought we'll talk about getting a mortgage with bad credit and um, bad credit type mortgages. Um, there are quite a lot of information out there on websites and, and, and obviously on YouTube about uh, trying to help people with who've, who've had sort of checkered past, maybe um, mortgage arrears, maybe mispayments, CCJs. Um, so bad credit can mean a lot of things. When I get a client phoning me up that says, well, um, I've had credit problems in the past. Can you help me get a mortgage? That could be a huge difference between lots of different things. So it could really be late payments on, on mobile phones um, or, you know, bankruptcies. So, and there's a big difference between all of those different things. So you can start from late payments, um, then you can go from, uh, you know, county court judgments, defaults, um, missed mortgage payments, which is pretty serious when, when you're trying to get a mortgage. Um, you can go IVAs, debt management plans, bankruptcies. So, and everyone's in a different sort of position. Um, what you will find generally is if they've had a problem with one thing, they may have other problems out there as well. So it might be three, four different things. It might be a default, it might be a missed mortgage payment, it might be a mobile phone payment, it may be a, you know, next directory we see a lot. Um, it may be a car parking CCJ. So there are lots of uh, solutions out there and different lenders have got different views when it comes to criteria and how they view that client. Um, so, and there are sort of written rules and there are unwritten rules when it comes to these type of um, applicants. Um, so we, we've actually been in this market for 12 years now, uh, coming up to 12 years. Um, I personally have been in, the, in this sort of sector, in the specialist sector. Um, I've been working within this around 20 years now. So we know the market very well. We know many of the main lenders uh, very, very well. Um, and, and really we know this type of business. And that's important when you're dealing with, with uh, um, adverse or specialist or non-standard mortgages because um, rate is one thing, but you know, lending criteria comes into it a lot more. And understanding the lender's criteria, sometimes written criteria, sometimes exception rules. You know, not everything is written down there. Some lenders will take a view on certain things. Um, so let's get into it and let's talk about some of the main um, aspects of these type of lending. First of all, um, what, what you'll find is uh, everybody uh, wants the highest loan to value. Um, what you will find is, although there are lenders that will do um, people that have had adverse credit in the past with 10% deposit, generally what you'll find is the market sitting there is really at 85% loan to value, which is you need 15% deposit. There are some 10% deposit deals out there. Certainly, I don't think there's, there are a few 95%, 5% deposits, but what you will find is the more serious the problem is, the more deposit they want. Or when it took place, and that's really important. Um, if you've had a CCJ, say three years ago, whether it's, this, whether it's been satisfied or not, there are a number of lenders that will take a view on it. Uh, same with default, same with missed mortgage payments and so forth. But if it's last year, for example, the choices become a lot more limited. Maybe the loan to value has become a lot more limited. So everything is to do with what type of missed mortgage payment, oh, sorry, what type of adverse it is. So there's a big difference between mobile phone and a missed mortgage payment. They're two different things, okay? So, um, and when it took place, okay? And what happened? Um, is, it, is it a one-off or is it a part of a series of things? And if it is, what happened with that thing? Did you lose your job? Was there an illness? Was there a life event? Let's understand it. And between us, we'll have a conversation and say, right, okay, this is the situation. Um, now, so it, when it comes to adverse cases, it's really important you disclose everything. And the first thing you should really do is get a credit report. Um, so you can get a credit report. Um, I quite like Check My Fast because what it does do is it will give you three agencies credit reports rather than one so uh, the broker and the uh, the broker can actually go through it and yourself you can go through it and see what different credit agencies will actually have against you because sometimes it could be different one person might have it a late payment for one month and then the other might have it another month and that could be the difference okay um and so 
get your credit report first. You can get a credit report by, I leave a link on, on, on the video, on the, on the notes on the video, and you can go and get it for free. Um, generally what happens is it's free for the first month and then you'll have to pay, I don't know, 14 pounds 99 afterwards. Um, so you could literally get it and you could use it for that month and cancel it. However, it's quite good to keep on top of your credit um, situation anyway, especially if you've had problems or you've got ongoing problems. So get your credit report, uh, and then we can have a proper conversation because there's no point sort of willy nilly. Oh, I think I had a late payment and I think the CCJ was, you know, around a thousand pounds. Okay, well, how much was it? When was it satisfied? When was it registered? All of those things will have a bearing on lending criteria. The more precise we can be around your credit problems, the better we can match up the right lender. And what I don't like is when I see credit reports and they've got multiple lenders already searched under them. Yes, they're soft footprints, and what you will find is a lot of the lenders that deal with adverse credits now have got soft footprints, which in, 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 a sense, in essence doesn't affect your credit report. But I still don't like to see multiple lenders searches on credit reports because that gives, that gives the underwriters of the lenders um, a bad vibe. Why has it gone to four lenders? Why are four lenders potentially have rejected the deal? Now, they don't know whether it's been rejected or not, but what happens is um, sometimes when you're dealing with brokers, what the brokers are doing, uh, and, and I've seen it done where they're taking your information and they're running credit checks on you, um, which they shouldn't really be doing. Uh, the only way we would be running an agreement in principle with a lender is we've had a conversation about a deal, We've represented that deal to you. We've told you who the lender is. We've told you all the cost. We've got an application form completed from you. We've got a signed permission from you. We've got your proof of ID, proof of address, and, and all the other bits and pieces. That's the only time we will actually um, submit an agreement in principle to that lender. Okay? Now, what I'm seeing is, you know, you fill in your inquiry form and the brokers are going away and, and filling it in because what they want to say is, yeah, you've been accepted, you've been accepted. And that gives a false um, sense of security to the clients because um, a credit profile is only one thing when you're dealing with specialist lenders. Affordability is really important. So just because um, a client says they're earning, I don't know, £40,000, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're earning £40,000. What you will find is when you get the full form completed, they may be on £25,000 and they may be on a £15,000 bonus or commission structure. Well, hang on a minute. Most lenders on a non-standard um, uh, specialist lender will only probably take 50% of that income, that additional income, or they may have pension contributions or their outgoings haven't been put in properly on that initial inquiry form. Because most people are just saying, well, it's an initial inquiry form. I'm just going to put in rough estimates. Well, that makes a huge difference for lenders because affordability is more tighter because you're paying a higher rate. So it's vital you have the information right. That's why we like to get that information. We'd like to get your pay slip so we can see how much pension contributions you've got, for example. What other costs? Is there a gym membership, for example? Then we'll tally that up with your bank statement to see, okay, well, have you got any other cost? Oh, by the way, we can see there's child benefit here, but you haven't disclosed a child benefit on your form. Things like that. That's why you're paying a broker. That's why you're paying a broker, because the broker can double check the work. The broker can make sure it fits the lending criteria, rather than willy-nilly just putting it on an application form and sending it. And they, they, those are the reasons why a lot of these cases get rejected. One, non-disclosure of adverse. So because they haven't seen your credit report, they've literally, you've told them you've had a CCJ. They don't know you've had two more defaults and a late payment and a missed mortgage payment. They're just telling the lender that that's what it is. And the lender comes back and says, well, actually, we can't accept a late payment in the last 12 months for a mortgage. So anyway, that, that credit check's been done. Now, like I said, it's a soft footprint, so it's not the end of the world, but they, one, they should be disclosing it to you, two, they shouldn't be running around credit, credit checks with different lenders. You know, you don't, want to, you, want, you don't want to burn your bridges, okay? And, and it, the fact is you want the job done to properly. You're paying a broker or, or you're using a broker to do the job properly. So those are some of the issues around non-disclosure and how the application process works. Um, in terms of lending criteria, um, like I said, we've got a whole host of lenders now you see, we started our business just after the crash, um, this business, Niche Advice, 
And I remember at the time, no lenders will deal with adverse credit. You know, before that, before 2007, eight, there were hundreds of lenders dealing with it. You know, it was like, you know, here's my 25% deposit and they wouldn't even check various things. After the crash, there were um, a lot less lenders dealing with this type of uh, business. Now, thankfully, there are lots of lenders dealing with adverse cases. Um, so you, we can pick and choose which lenders right. Some lenders will be good on deposits, for example. Other lenders will be good on taking a view on adverse credits, um, type of credit. So some lenders will say, yeah, we're okay with CCJs and default, but if you've ever been bankrupt, whether it's 20 years ago or had an IVA, we will not do it. Um, so understanding that before you go through, before you do the credit searches and goes to underwriting is really important. So, and, and so you've got the loan to value lenders, you've got the good lenders that are good on affordability, you've got lenders that are good on um, taking a view on your account, for example, do one year's account, last year's account, net profit if you're self-employed. Uh, and that makes a big difference rather than averaging your income. So you've got affordability lenders, you've got loan to value lenders, you've got adverse credit type lenders, certain lenders will have, uh, you know, if it's over two years old, they'll ignore it totally. Some will say if it's over a year old, we'll totally ignore it. So they're very good on criteria and different types of adverses. There are some lenders that are great with defaults, there are some lenders that are good with CCJs, there are some lenders that are good with missed mortgage payments. Then you go to the types of property. There are some lenders that are great. For example, if you're doing a right to buy, council houses, they're great for that. There are other lenders that are good with, um, maybe if the property is a flat above a commercial, they're good for that. Um, so it's not just about the rate. It's not just about the fee. It's about doability of the deal. It's about affordability of the deal. It's about the longevity of the deal, okay? And so a good broker, a difference between a good broker is they understand that, they've done that type of business before, and they know the pitfalls with a certain lender. I'll give you an example. There are lenders out there that no matter what their affordability says, when it goes into the application, I know they will um, look at the affordability a lot closer and the loan always drops, okay? So as long as you know that, you, will, you, will, you can uh, account for that on the affordability. Um, there are lenders that are very good with second incomes, for example, um, rental property incomes. So a lot of people have had probably uh, issues with their properties, maybe a odd CCJ on a buy to let or whatever it is. They're, those type of lenders are quite good with that type of profile. So it's matching up the right credit profile to the lending criteria. OK, um, in terms of uh, fees, again, so broker fees, uh, we tend not to charge. Well, we don't charge any fees up front. Um, we start off from, you know, £499 right the way to 1%. So it depends on the deal itself. Most of the deals we're doing is 499 um, But if it's got heavy adverse on there, we'll charge half a percent or 1% of the deal. Not completion, no deal, no payment until everything has been done. So whether you're remortgaging on completion or whether you're purchased on completion, there is no upfront fee. I don't believe in admin charges or things like that. Especially it's very important because I know a lot of specialist adverse brokers out there are charging quite a lot upfront. Um, because the chances of deals are harder to go through, they wanna make their money upfront. I don't believe in it. I just think basically if you deliver on your, uh, on your work, then you should get paid. Uh, and that's the way we work. Um, so there's lots of different types of adverse cases. On our website, nicheadvice.co.uk, I've talked about a number of different specific adverse cases, whether it's mortgage arrears, um, specific around, um, uh, you know, it, it's different from England and Wales to Scotland, for example, different lenders will lend on that. We've talked about CCJs, we've got pages on defaults, we've got pages on minor late payments. So uh, bankruptcies, IVAs, if you're in a debt management, whether you wanna stay in a debt management or whether you wanna get out, they are all there. The most important part is, guys, getting a mortgage is, you know, for a long time. You want that mortgage to be paid. It's, a, it's important you understand the, the consequences of getting a mortgage with adverse. You're seen as a higher risk client. It's important that the right broker, you have the right conversations and you make sure you're not stretching yourself too much. Um, you know, it's, it's vital you keep up repayments with your mortgage, otherwise you'll end up you know, getting yourself in more problems, you know, you'll have more problems, you get repossessed. So um, 
adverse cases need to be discussed they need to be given advice it's vital you you seek advice um, and some adverse cases for example it looks like an adverse case but it can be placed in the high street if it's a low loan to value deal certain lenders certain high street lenders will actually accept that deal okay so you don't necessarily always have to go down the you know higher rate lenders or or, or specialist lenders some of those cases we're placing with high street lenders OK, so don't think just because you've had late payments or missed mortgage payments or something, if it's more historical, we could probably place them on the high street. So um, once we've done the fact one, once we've had a conversation, we can certainly um, try to sort of uh, work out a path for you. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, there is so much when it comes to adverse uh, uh, getting a mortgage with bad credit and stuff in the UK. Um, but what I've tried to do is just give you an overview of what's available, what we can do and the type of deals that we are seeing. Um, thank you so much again. Please hit the like button and subscribe uh, to Niche Advice.